Hi, I'm Rebecca Bradley. This is the Virtual Crime Book Club. It is Monday the 31st of January 2022. We are here to discuss For Your Own Good by Samantha Downing. Um, spoilers will be included in this discussion, so if you're watching this on the video on YouTube or the blog, be aware um, if you haven't read the book and are intending to, um, you might find something out um, that you don't want to hear, so maybe read the book first. Um, we do have new members with us this month, so welcome to new members. Um, thank you for joining us. It's a free for all, so I'll start it off um, and then with a, a couple of questions and then you just join in as and when you feel comfortable saying something. So don't feel that you have to hold back. Um, it's a friendly group. Um, join in when you've got something that you feel you want to say about the book. Um, first of all, has everybody read it? Yes. Yep. Because I know um, some of the new members may have joined maybe halfway through the month, and but you've all managed to read it. That's good. Okay, did you enjoy it? Yeah, very much. Yes, very I did. Surprisingly. <laughs> Didn't think I was going to when it started, but I did enjoy it in the end. Any dissent, dissenting noises? Um, it was all right. A little bit predictable, I thought. That's that's the only thing. It, it, I enjoyed it. I read it through, but I just knew what was happening all the time. It was just so predictable to me. I thought it got a bit far-fetched at yeah, times, yeah, especially when right. everybody started following everybody else around. Um, that being said, it's our summer here and it was a nice, good summer read for me, so. So we've had some enjoy it, some were like that, and a couple um, haven't enjoyed it. So those that enjoyed it, did you want to say something, Marina? Yeah, I just wanted to say I enjoyed it, but I read it about a week and a half ago, and I can't for the life of me remember much about it. So while it was enjoyable while <laughs> reading it, it wasn't very memorable. Right. Mm. And I was going to say, those that enjoyed it, what did you enjoy about it? And you can't remember. It was it was a fun sort of pace to it. It felt a little bit YA. I don't know if it's mm. intended to be YA yeah. or if it was just the school setting, but it felt, you know, very quick to read, but just not very complex, I suppose. I've been in the education business for a lot of years, and some of the way that the parents and students are rang quite true i found myself nodding my head yes that's what happens really mm -hmm. some of them yeah, yeah that's interesting I, I liked it um i guess like marina i don't remember a lot of it <laughs> but i do remember at the time thinking it was going in one direction and then it sort of went in a different direction and like all the characters that i thought were okay turned out to be horrible and you know and I found that quite interesting that actually there was like a sort of an unpeeling of different characters like you you were reading about them at face value and then when you actually found out a bit more about their story it made you think about them quite differently so I thought that was quite interesting and I'm just gonna I'm gonna apologize because Andrea is my sister so <laughs> you're apologizing that's incredible. I always apologise for you, Andrea. It's quicker. <laughs> Definitely a sister. <laughs> well, I don't think she needs apologising for. No, she does. She does. <laughs> we won't listen to her, Andrea. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, so, does anybody else want to say anything on what they enjoyed about the book? I enjoyed it as, as a sort of lightweight uh, weekend read. And I only read it, um, I started it Saturday, finished it yesterday. Um, and, it, and it sort of felt light and frothy and funny and, and not terribly serious um, and a little bit caricature in places, but engaging enough to keep me interested. Um, and I think, like Marina, I probably won't remember it very well next week. But if anybody asked me, I'd say, yeah, 
yeah, you know, that's that's a good, you know, bit of fun. Uh, if you just want to give your brain a bit of a rest, you know, that's that's fun. That's nice. Um, but I don't think it's got a lot of meat that would keep me engaged in it for long. Um, I, I, it struck me as being quite short, but I didn't look at how many pages. Is it, is it actually a short novel? Um, and maybe that contributed to the YA feel about it. Uh, it was certainly a fast read. Probably the kind of book we were after in December, which yeah. we didn't get. Yeah. Yeah. This is so therapeutic for me because I thought I was losing my mind because I can't remember. I read it about <laughs> two weeks ago and uh, I had to just have a look at the book again just to refresh my mind as to the characters. I did enjoy it, but uh, it's, it's not deep, but it was enjoyable. And that's what she set out to do, yeah. I think. I think that it was a good good read after my bloody project and snow those were very they were much shorter this book was almost 400 pages and those other two books were shorter but were so dense and it was kind of a relief to have something that um did flow and keep you going and a kind of a page turner in its own way what did people um, think that didn't quite enjoy it? Hi, Vera. Is it just you, Craig? Are you the only one that didn't? No, no, oh, I, I didn't either. I How didn't you didn't like it either. I didn't either. I mean, no. I hate it, but not. Mm -mm. Yeah, I said um, <laughs> I would never quiet. recommend it. Yeah. I found it very predictable and, and certainly towards the end I could have you know just reeled off what was happening. Very unrealistic to me. I hope. I like mm. things it remind it reminded me of the movies that you watch where you say that's not real that isn't how it happens like why are they doing that it just felt like you know everybody was being arrested for absolutely no reason oh he was on the corner yesterday oh well that must be him arrest him you know it was just crazy i mean just the police looked like buffoons you know arresting anybody that had you know a, a, a twinkle in their eye and uh, you know it, it, you got you so i lost interest in it because of that i didn't i like things to be a little bit more and i didn't really care for the the people in it the characters uh they i didn't get uh, engaged with them, I sort of felt like they were fluffy or I just didn't feel like they were real. I mean, how did he get away with so much? And it, you know, it just was so silly. And then of course at the end, which was supposed to be the big ending, um, I didn't feel like the priest was in it enough to have been the killer. You know, sort of like she threw him in there, you know? I, so I, I wouldn't recommend it. I didn't like the ending either. I, I would have been more satisfied if it just would have ended and they would have discovered who the murderer was. Yes. But by throwing yep. another murderer in when you've already had a serial killer right. and not and acting in the way he did, it was just, it, it seemed too contrived. So I think the, mm -hmm. I think better editing and a tighter story might've been actually more enjoyable. And Dawn, you did, was it Dawn, you said you didn't well, enjoy it? I didn't really, um, I didn't like any, any many of the characters and I didn't feel I understood some of the motivational or fully what they were like as people. I didn't feel they were fully formed in some ways and I, I didn't have any empathy mm -hmm. with them. So to be honest, if they'd all been killed, I wouldn't have been that bothered. <laughs> <laughs> I think I kind of felt that, but it didn't worry me because it just felt like a lightweight bit of frothy novel that it was a bit like re, um, watching, you know, Murder, She Wrote. It, and I'm sorry, I, I like that. So don't get me wrong. But, but you know, people get murdered. And nobody cares very much. It's, it's a bit of a, um, you know, given a death in paradise, you know, and, and it's not about the character development. It, it's about the kind of the little puzzle, puzzly bits and what's going to happen next. Um, but I, I take your point that the characters were not uh, likable and uh, they were not well developed either. They were a bit random at times, but I think I, I just kind of went along with it because it was entertaining enough to, to draw me along. Um, hi, guys. Of, um, um, sorry, was, were you saying something, Chris? 
Yeah, um, I'm a new member and, and hello to everybody. Um, yeah, I just wanted to pick up on the point the lady before was making about none of the characters being likeable. And that's exactly how I found it. I really enjoyed the book, don't get me wrong. Um, but I did find all, without exception, of the characters dislikable. And I thought, some you, you know, as well as needing dark with light, you also need light with dark. And it being a black comedy as such, I would have liked to have seen one or two characters who were normal and not stalking somebody and not going off poisoning somebody. And, yeah, I just wanted a bit of light in it. Mm. Mm. Yeah, and I found it enjoyable. I think it was like a very light read. It was the light read that we asked for Christmas. <laughs> we got it now. Yeah. So yeah, it was enjoyable. It was a light read. It was kind of funny. But yeah, it wasn't really believable. And everybody turned out to have a very dark past or everybody turned out to be a murderer or capable of murder, which is a bit <laughs> strange. But yeah, it was enjoyable. I read it quite fast. So it's this kind of novel that you just, you read it, it's fun and you just forget about it. It's true. <laughs> yeah, I think the two, the only two characters who were nice were the two wives, like Frank's wife and the main character's wife who seemed quite normal. And I think that's why they weren't in the book. Like, you know, you, you <laughs> hardly saw or heard about <laughs> yeah. Frank's wife because I think she was just too, you know, she wasn't murdering anyone. So she was too normal for it. But yeah, they, they were all pretty horrible people. Like even the ones who were supposed to be nice were, like the students were not always that great. Um, she did, she doesn't hold back on creating dislikable characters. So with that in mind, out of, all the characters who was your favourite? I like the lad. I quite liked him. I, mean, I all these people said they didn't like anybody, and I quite liked him. Zach. <laughs> yeah, Zach. Quite liked him. Yeah, I, quite, I felt quite sorry for him actually. I thought he was sort of thrown into it all and was doing what he could. But uh, yeah, no, I like I liked him. Sorry, everybody, but I did. Oh, I, I, hi, I'm, I'm Mitzi. I'm from New Orleans um, in Louisiana, United hi. States. Hi. Um, I like Zach, too. And um, so I can relate. My, my daughter went to a very upscale private school, and uh, we were, were not those parents, but there were a lot of those parents at that school so I can <laughs> Marco I can see and I right I, I don't know that they would go so far as to murder people but they would definitely <laughs> manipulate people <laughs> wow it's 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 funny to hear that parents really can go to those kind of extremes to get their kids um, better grades you know like when he didn't get the good grade in the beginning and they were pressuring him to get go to the um, teacher to Teddy and get his grade reassessed um, it, it was just mind-boggling at least they had him go instead of donating money for a building or something Yeah. So, anybody else have? Yeah, I uh, thought that was very culturally specific because while I was reading that, I was thinking, well, okay, maybe at Eton or Harrow or places like that, maybe in in the UK. But otherwise, I can't imagine you'd have much success going there and threatening teachers. So. Mm. One, I think it has a lot to do with the American college admission system. Yeah. One of our sons uh, went to Cambridge. And so he went through that, the thing where, you know, you rank your schools and, um, and then you have to take your first choice. And I really wish they had that in, in, the, in the States because our other son stayed in the United States and there you really have to apply to 50 schools because no matter how qualified you are, you don't know that you will get in. 
and you all, and it, I mean, the system is so crazy. So I, I think it is really culturally specific to the United States. And this mm -hmm. idea that you're, the parents feel so much pressure because they want their children to have these opportunities. And they know that every, there will be so many applications where the children are overqualified and that they're competing against. For instance, you know, we all take the standardized tests in the United States and the really good schools, they'll be, have thousands of applicants, literally, I, th I think it's several thousand, but several thousand is a lot because they don't admit that many students who will have perfect scores on, on these standardized tests. When so you say how, school, sorry, when you say school, you mean college, we, what we would call uh, college. University. Oh, university. university. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm that's, sorry, that's, university. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yes, I'm talking about, um, yes, in the United States where uh, you have to do really good in the high school college thing in order to get to university. And um, so that part was very believable. Um, and I do think Zach was one of the nicer characters because he was just a kid trying to navigate between the insanity of the system and his friend who was arrested and his parents who were had a lot of um, had put a lot of demands and pressure on him to achieve. That's, I think that was one of the things that was interesting in the book was to ex explore the American system. It is so completely different from the English system. Um, I mean, you know, we're over here, the, the teachers will guide you, but you, their, their word as to what you're going to have as a grade is not in any way law. It's how you get on with the A-levels and your interview. I mean, I, I went to Cambridge um, and I only came from a state school. I didn't go to a private school. And it was purely based upon academic achievement, nothing to do with what the teachers uh, were going to recommend, although they give references, but um, the same weight is nowhere attached to it. And I found that very interesting in the book. It's a completely different system. Thank goodness we haven't got it here, but uh, there you go. <laughs> oh, funny. Yeah. Um, when Teddy was um, plotting his second murder, how did you feel that he was trying to, um, what was her name, release Courtney from prison? Did you find that believable? Um, well, yes, because I think he actually believed that he was doing them good. I think, I think that was the whole point of the book, that he really did think that what he was doing was right, to get these people, these students and to appreciate what they had and, and not be so up, up your nose, if you like, or whatever. Um, and I, th I, I think that's, you know, that's why he, he was doing it, wasn't it? To, because he believed Courtney was the only one, the only ones who was uh, worth doing it for. I think it. I think it's as believable as anything else that happens, yeah. really. Yeah. In the book. Yeah. Um, he had his own sort of strange little moral code, as Lynn said, and he believed that he was doing all these things. Yeah. Somebody's good, whether they wanted it done or not. So I think yes, it fitted <laughs> with his rather warped moral scheme. And of course, at the end, Zach had caught it. And was that was one of the things at the end? He was going to become a teacher. For their own good, wasn't he? So <laughs> was going to do a complete circle. Whether or not it turned out the same, I don't know. But obviously, but a couple of you have called the book um, light and fluffy. And one of my questions is: Did you think the tension was held, even though you knew who the killer was? But if it's light and fluffy, what do you even think there was tension in the book? Yeah, I didn't think so. No. I didn't feel tension in the book. That was part of my disappointment. Yeah, I didn't pick up. I like to get engaged, you know. Yeah. So it was easy to put down and not pick back up again. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I, I found it such a fast read that that didn't really sort of come into it, that, that I would, you know, be drawn back to it with great, you know, gusto, um, because I, I read it really quickly. and. I, I, because of the believability or lack of believability in most of it, I, I suppose the tension wasn't really there because I didn't really, I wasn't really engaged enough with any of the characters to, to kind of worry about what might happen. Um, 
there, there was a sort of slight thing over the girl who was in jail and I was thinking oh I hope they get her out you know this is this is not going to shape up to be a good book if she ends up paying some penalty for this um but it, I think that's what made it lightweight for me I didn't really believe in any of the characters sufficiently to care very much and that made it fun to read and lightweight but it doesn't stick in my memory because I wasn't really deeply engaged in it I think you have to build tension. Sorry, say that again. Sorry, I, I think you have to build tension in the book as well. And because they were quite short, punchy chapters, I don't think that you ever really got tension coming through because it kept changing direction at the end of each chapter. Um, she had a very... Um, decisive way of hitting you with the last line of each chapter with it slightly changing direction and because of that I personally didn't find that there was any specific tension being built. I did it on Audible um, because I was a bit pushed for time and it's nice to take it when I go walking and um, it was 10 hours something on Audible and I have to say the most irritating man's voice I've ever heard. <laughs> So, so I was sort of turned off quite a bit, but, and I got to chapter 28 before anything happened at all. It seemed to be building characters, but not really building them. It was, yeah, I found it quite I odd. agree with the voice, because I listened to it on audio also. Oh, and I, I did. Speed, because he spoke so slowly, I had to increase yeah. one and a half so that it was, uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I read it much faster, and I'm Portuguese reading in English, and I read it like, I don't know, five or six hours. <laughs> wow. It was quite, it was a quite fast reading, so for me, I agree with Wendy, it wasn't really the tension, it was just, okay, it was fun, because it was, we were all like, all these people are crazy, so let's see what happens. Everything is a bit unbelievable, but we're like, who is he going to kill next? <laughs> who is he going to poison next? So yeah, yeah, it was, it was I, fun. It was a fun read. I totally, I totally agree. It was more, a, it was more curiosity as to yeah. what was going to happen and who was going to die next, rather than uh, tension as to, you know, is something awful going to happen to these lovely people? I, the, you know, that wasn't there at all. So, Wendy used used the phrase, "It wasn't believable." I, I think the characters were were all so crazy. You know, and to have that many crazy characters in one in one place at the same time doing the same things to each other in different ways, just I it just defied reality for me. Um, yes, I, I take the point about the American school system, which I don't know a lot about, but I think I read some time ago that there were there not um, some prosecutions for parental interference in grades. And so that mm -hmm. kind of echoed as being a, a kind of real premise, but... Mm -hmm this idea that this teacher would be, you know, teacher of the year and still have this big chip on his shoulder enough to, to kind of resent everybody and then try to do good for his students by, you know, killing people. And, and, and I, I just, it just stretched all credibility for me. It was fun. I keep saying that. And, you know, I did enjoy it, um, but only as a, as a kind of lightweight, fun read that, doesn't really bear too much looking at for credibility for me. It just got me wondering, as crime readers, what we expect in a novel in relation to um, what what did we just say? Real, whether realistic? Realism. Because we read the sci-fi crime novel Constance, which has got no basis in realism at all. And we all love that book, but, but this I, is more current and yet it didn't feel realistic. So I, I what is it more we... about psychological truth of the characters for me? Right. Um, you know, they behave with some basis of, of relatability to, to real life. Um, and this didn't really do that for me, whereas Constance did. The, you know, the characters who weren't uh, human were as real as those that were. So that works for me. So it's more of a related, relatable... Belief in the character. And how they react yeah. to their situations. 
would everybody else agree with that kind and of more in depth I, I yeah, found... uh, more in depth too big go ahead craig sorry yeah yeah i found go ahead. unbelievable was the um, the police and the fbi they, they were just hopeless yeah and and the, it had for the main character <laughs> Ted, to leave them clues and hurry up and find the clue and so you'll know that's going on and all right yeah. I'll get someone else just so you can get this person released there will be someone there who can who's who's you know who could solve this case or, or look through this case properly but the police were there they, they brought in the mic to the fbi and they were just as hopeless as the, the police it was that was so unbelievable i, I found well, they didn't seem to have a very big role in the book, did they, the police or the FBI? No. They were mentioned, but they didn't seem to have a role. No, there was no particular characters, were there? No, no. 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 They were just kind of on the periphery yeah. to say that there's been a murder, so there's got to be an investigation. Maybe, maybe it would have been a bit better if they had had been brought in a bit more and done a bit more of an investigation in this and, 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 and sort of weave their way through those characters that were already there. Mm -hmm. I think for me it was unbelievable in that I think someone er earlier said it was like a Murder, She Wrote episode, you know, and I don't mean that in a bad way because I love Murder, She Wrote and Columbo, <laughs> but it was like, I can't remember the character's name, but the girl who was in prison her mother died. Courtney. Courtney. So yeah. Courtney's mother died. And it was just, oh, yeah, she's dead. Let's move on with the plot now. So it was like people were dying and you didn't actually really, nobody seemed that bothered right. by mm. a lot of the deaths. And I, I think that's not a normal human interaction. So for me, that was the unbelievable bit was just, it felt very much like to move the plot on, we need to have a murder. So let's just pick someone to die. You know, it, it, Sorry. Yeah, I think the characters felt more like devices to move the story on rather than in-depth characters in their own right. Yeah. As a, as a reader of criminal mm. uh, books, you know, and, and crime, and, uh, uh, I find the way to build up tension and what I'm looking for is something that you could come across in an everyday life and you feel that you are part of it and you feel the, uh, the fright and the uh, scaredness of the, past, of the uh, character that's involved because it's so relatable to you, the boy, girl next door type of thing. And I think if that, that's the type of thing that can really build up um, tension. And that's, that's, they're the type of books I enjoy the most if I feel like I can relate to them like that. Mm. But I Donna is right, Courtney was too. in prison for murder, her mother was dead, and yet she showed no emotion at all, did she? Not about that, no. I mean, it was just... She was probably still a bit in shock, I don't know. And... <laughs> I don't... That's very generous. I mean, as human beings, we could assume that, but I think, you know, if I'm reading a book, I expect a character to have a, a, a reaction to their mother's death, which is more than, well, that's annoying. <laughs> oh dear, I'm in jail. You know, that's so teenagers, so she... <laughs> you see, that wasn't believable either. I mean, she, she would never have been put in jail. Oh, she wished her mum dead, her mum died, so it must have been her. <laughs> it was for me that yeah. that spoiled it because the police were inept, the FBI were inept, and they locked up the wrong people. And um I just felt that that whole bit about it just was not believable. So it wasn't really a crime book for me. It was more, I don't know. Oh, so it was murders, but it wasn't what I would describe as a crime book. It was more like a dark comedy. While I was preparing questions mm -hmm. this afternoon for tonight's meeting, uh, I know it's still this afternoon for some people. Um, I looked on Goodreads and at some of the reviews and it's got some rave reviews. Do you think it's written in a certain tone for to be read as a certain kind of book and not the kind of crime books we usually read on here? So it's not, I don't know if I'm saying that in the right way, but it's meant as something else, not what we usually read as a straight crime book. Do you think it's meant to be, as she's written it, um, more 
like a satire. Lifted up, less emotional from the teacher's point of view. I would imagine that it is written deliberately in that style. And I would be interested, I've, I've never read anything of hers before, but I'd be interested if anyone has to, to tell me, you know, are the rest of her books also written in this tone? Is it a style choice that therefore her reader knows what they're going to get in, in that way? Uh, well, because I, that's sort of coming back yeah. to the Columbo murder she wrote, you know, are, are they crime or are they just, you know, light entertainment and the crimes are almost incidental. They're just a vehicle to hang this bit of entertainment on and a bit of a puzzle, maybe. I, I've, I've actually got two more of her books to read because I quite, I quite enjoyed it. And I thought, oh, you know, I'll try the others as well. So... I've got those, I'll let you know. <laughs> well, if it was written from the point of view of Teddy, who felt superior to everybody anyway, it's probably why the police were so inept, because it was his point of view. Mm. Yeah, I see that. Mm. Yeah. Well, it, you know, yes, I agree with that, absolutely. That, But, but the... It, what what they actually did was also inept and that kind of was a problem because mm -hmm. they that if there was anything that was real about it you know they wouldn't have gone to arrest people that quickly on such flimsy evidence so and, and you wouldn't have taken the word of a teacher and then said oh well this must be right let's go and yeah yeah but if it was primarily from his point of view then yeah everybody else would be needing him to guide them fair point the ending has already been brought up were you surprised by the ending uh, i was although i said it's predictable the manner of the ending the death sort of types of another murder was but it, it the priest was suddenly thrown in the end although he was an ex-teacher at the end and so you just knew that it, it was going to come up but it just felt i don't know it it was a little bit sort of oh okay you know powder on the, the cape or whatever it was over the statue but it did feel mm, you know it was a bit random of that actually because it i mean how was he going to prove how was he going to make sure that nobody else touched it and nobody mm -hmm. else had an open wound you know that sort of you know, that could have quite easily been anybody couldn't it and also he just became a priest so and so he becomes a priest and then suddenly he's taking a life so that was a <laughs> bit strange because he was actually like a nice person and uh, and he was just a bit mm -hmm and confused and he becomes a priest and then he decides to murder the teddy instead of bringing all this evidence to the police or something so that was a bit yeah i think somebody mentioned the word contrived and i think the ending was very contrived uh, in that way which you know again in a light read i don't really object to because it's got to be tidied up somehow um but it did feel a bit random and and very kind of ah there's there's my chess piece i can move to to kind of take care of this mess that <laughs> that's going on <laughs> made it fun would anybody have preferred to have seen Fallon get her um, retribution rather than it have been Frank? Yeah, I think so. I think possibly. I think she had more. She had more to um, be angry about, didn't she? Although she still was, she'd still done some pretty, pretty bad things herself. But, oh. uh, Teddy had written a bad reference for her, but technically the reference was correct. She yeah, had yeah. she had cheated to get all of those yeah. things. So yeah, yeah. You know, I've heard the previous master, hadn't she? Yeah. So like you so, know, I found it a little bit yeah. like yeah. she was one of the characters where I was thinking, oh, I hope she you know finds all this and then Teddy will be in trouble. And then like just randomly, it seemed like a whole paragraph was inserted saying oh but she's a bad one after all oh and now she's dead <laughs> you know so, well whatever it was and I just think oh 
okay <laughs> all right but I you know I know we're all like saying these for me it was a nice jolly read it really was quite something you could just easily pick up put down pick up put down you weren't picking it up and thinking oh where was I in this book what was happening in the plot you know it was I liked it from that point of view and I, like if, if I saw another one of her books I wouldn't mind reading a, another one but um, it, I wouldn't say it was the best. I did wonder at one point if it was supposed to be some sort of parody of a detective psychological novel. Like, I don't know if you've seen on Netflix, there's a, a film just now called... Yes. The mm-hmm. Women Over the Street from The Girl in the Window. Yes. And that is like a super clever parody of those Harlan Coben type things. And I was like, is this is this this really clever parody? <laughs> I just haven't read enough to recognize it. But no, I thought it was oh it, it zipped along, and that was good for me. I really liked that. So, would how many of you would read another book by? She's got a few books out. Yeah, I probably would. You know, a, a summer beach read or a pre-Christmas bit of you know fun light reading. I'd I'd give another one a go certainly. That's mm-hmm. that's over half mm-hmm. of you anyway. So it's, it's nice to have a light read in between all the very dark uh, crime novels. We all like to read. I, I like Nordic Noir a lot. And they are so heavy. They're also a bit unbelievable because every character is really twisted and everything that is bad happens all the time. So I think it's also nice to have these lighter books where you just laugh a bit although people are getting murdered well well, I do (laughs) actually like black comedy but but I think there are just others so yes like Donna said Mm -hmm. I wasn't sure if this was supposed to be a satire but it didn't quite ring true in Mm -hmm. terms of black comedy because I've seen other authors do it really well you know like Auntie Tuaminen or Chris Brookmeyer or you know there there are lots who do it really well and this one just felt a bit neither one thing nor the other so if you could ask the author oh, one question, what, what would you ask her? No questions for the author. Is it a parody? <laughs> I'd, I'd want to know what put the idea into her head in the first place. And did she have any um, connections or experience with the mm. private school system. I just wonder where these ideas came from. There mm. has to have been a trigger somewhere, and I'd be very interested to know what that was. Mm. Yeah. I think that's what I'd ask her. Like, I mean, my kids go to a private school, and that whole thing about the teachers having been at the school themselves, I recognize that immediately because it's so weird when you go to meet a teacher, the first thing they say to you is, and, you know, I'm an ex blah, blah student. And you think, all right, nice. I don't need to know that. Um, you know, but it's like a badge of honor for them that they went to the school. And yeah, so I-, I did, I did, I went, I taught at a state school and I'd already, I'd gone there as a child. Yeah. And my husband taught at the school that I, another school I'd gone to as well. And I thought it was a badge of honor. Yeah, but you know, that's, so I wondered, was she, I didn't read enough about her to know, but I was wondered, like, was she an ex-teacher or were her kids at a school? Had she, had she experienced something like that? You know, where did it, where did it come from? Mm. Interesting. Okay, let me uh, 